Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jocelyn and for today's topic, I'm going to discuss the latest testing and quarantine protocols for all Filipino citizens, whether you are a Philippine passport holder or a dual citizen or a permanent resident in a foreign country. For all Filipino citizens and dual citizens, travel insurance is not required. The COVID travel insurance is only required for all foreign nationals. In addition, your passport do not need to be valid for six months at the time of arrival. Also, you don't need a return ticket for 30 days. For all dual citizens, please take note of this important requirement if you have a dual passport when entering. All passengers who use these travel documents upon arrival and were admitted under the same status shall be required to present the same during departure. Accordingly, if you use a travel document, you will also be required to present the above documents during departure. Non-presentation of the required documents shall be a ground for the deferral of your departure. So please take note of this important advisory. In essence, if you arrived in the Philippines using these travel documents, you must also use the same documents to exit the Philippines. Now, here's the actual memorandum from the Commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration, Jaime Morente. Here are the new standard health protocols for all arriving passengers. If you are a Filipino or a Philippine passport holder or a dual citizen, you have two options. Either you can present a negative RT-PCR test prior to departure from country of origin or you can also present proof of a recovery from COVID. Unvaccinated Filipinos can still enter Philippines on or after February 10. Let me explain the testing rule for children. Those who are below 3 years old are exempted from the 48-hour negative test. Now, those who are required are children 4 years old and above or if below 4 years old and the child or children have symptoms, you must provide 48-hour negative test. For all Filipino citizens entering on February 10, here is the latest entry, testing, and quarantine protocols and this is based on the latest IATF Resolution Number 160A, and I'm going to explain in detail all the requirements. There are two categories, vaccinated Filipino citizens. You must have a 48-hour negative RT-PCR test. Also, the test must be taken within 48 hours prior to the date and time of departure from the country of origin or first port of embarkation in a continuous travel. Regarding negative RT-PCR tests taken within 48 hours prior to departure from country of origin, so how to count this? For example, flight is February 2nd, 3.48 p.m. Count back 48 hours from 3.48 p.m. And then take your RT-PCR test within 48 hours. This is just an example. 348 Las Vegas, February 2nd, you are departing. So this is regardless of a straight flight or connecting flights. And then you arrive San Francisco, 525. You have a four hours of layover. 9.30 p.m. leave San Francisco and you have a 15-hour flight from San Francisco to Manila on February 4. Also, there is no facility-based quarantine, but here is the requirement. You must self-monitor for any sign or symptom for seven days with the first day being the date of arrival, and you must report to the local government unit if there is a symptom. Also, for fully vaccinated, you must comply with the vaccination requirement. You must receive the second dose in a two-dose series or a single dose more than 14 days prior to your flight. Also, the vaccine must be included in the emergency listing 
or list of compassionate special permit issued by the Philippine FDA or emergency use listing of the World Health Organization. Let's move on to the proof of vaccination. You must present an acceptable proof of vaccination and only one is required. World Health Organization ICV or VaxCert PH or National or State Digital Certificate which has accepted VaxCert under reciprocal agreement or other proofs of vaccination permitted by the IATF. For the list of countries under the third option, I will provide the list of countries. Here are the approved vaccines for use in Philippines. Novavax formulation, Pfizer, also Moderna. Other vaccines are Sputnik, Janssen or Johnson & Johnson, Oxford, AstraZeneca, Covaxin, and Sinopharm, and also the Sinovac vaccine from China is also acceptable. For Filipino citizens who are unable to comply with the conditions or requirements, you will be considered as unvaccinated and you will be subject to the entry testing and quarantine protocols for unvaccinated. Here are the requirements. First, you must present a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours prior to the date and time of your departure from the country of origin. So this is the first port of embarkation. In addition, you must also undergo facility-based quarantine until the release of your negative RT-PCR test on the fifth day. And you will also be required to home quarantine until the 14th day of your arrival. The local government units of destination and the Barangay Health Emergency Response will be tasked to monitor those arriving passengers for home quarantine purposes. For unvaccinated, minor filipino nationals below 12 years of age you shall follow the quarantine protocols of your parent or guardian for minors 12 to 17 years of age you shall follow your vaccination status for purposes of quarantine protocols so if you're unvaccinated you will have five days of hotel quarantine and you will be tested on the fifth day and your parents shall accompany you if you are unvaccinated. For fully recovered Filipino nationals with positive RT-PCR test, you can still enter the Philippines as long as you have a positive RT-PCR test not earlier than 10 days, but not later than 30 days prior to the date and time of departure from the country of origin. Another positive test needed is your test taken within 48 hours prior to the date and time of departure from the country of origin. So you will have to present two positive tests. In order to avail of this fully recovered rule for Filipino nationals. In addition, you must also present a medical certificate. There are certain requirements that you needed to comply for you to be able to use the medical certificate. The medical certificate must be issued by a licensed physician stating that the Filipino national certifying that he or she was an asymptomatic, mild, moderate, severe, or critical case of COVID-19 as the case may be or has completed the mandatory isolation period. 
the isolation period is from the country of origin, not necessarily the isolation requirements in the Philippines. Also, must certify that the Filipino is no longer infectious and has been allowed free movement and travel. So, in short, the Filipino national must be cleared for travel. Here is the latest quarantine requirements for those fully recovered Filipino nationals with positive RT-PCR test results. For those who are vaccinated, there is actually no facility-based quarantine. All you have to do is self-monitor for any sign or symptom for 7 days with the first day being the date of arrival and shall be required to report to the local government unit of destination upon the manifestation of symptoms, if any. For unvaccinated, you will be required to quarantine in a facility-based hotel until the release of a negative RT-PCR test taken on the fifth day, and you will be required to undergo home quarantine until the 14th day with the date of arrival being the first. If you test positive, the isolation in Philippines is 10 days, for mild and for serious symptoms, it will be 21 days. Also, all inbound Filipinos shall register with a One Health Pass prior to arrival in the Philippines. So this must be done within three days prior to flying in the Philippines. In addition, for those required to quarantine in a hotel facility, must have confirmed hotel booking, go to One Health Pass, and find the quarantine facility list. For those with connecting flights, pre-book your hotel at the first point of entry and not on final destination. In addition, please register through the Trace mobile application. For those asking regarding the use of face shield and a face mask, Face shield is optional in alert levels 1, 2, or 3. Here are the complete rules regarding the use of face shield. Please refer to this guidance. Also, the rules can change anytime, but face mask is still required. Filipinos have the right to travel. You needed to present your proof of Filipino citizenship, such as a Philippine passport. However, there are Filipinos whose passport has been lost, damaged, or expired. There is actually a relief or a remedy so Filipinos without Philippine passport can travel to the Philippines by obtaining a travel document from Philippine consulate abroad for emergency use. Please remember that this travel document is only allowed for applicants who cannot be issued a Philippine passport and have an emergency travel to the Philippines such as due to medical or legal reasons or death in the family. This is only a one-time use travel document and it's only good for 30 days from its issuance. So this is only a one-way ticket to the Philippines and if you needed a Philippine passport you must apply once you arrive in the Philippines. Another set of passengers are dual citizens. Dual citizens are Filipinos who have acquired a foreign citizenship and at the same time reacquired Filipino citizenship. You actually have two options. If you don't have your Philippine passport, you can present your dual citizenship documents. Let's talk about the Philippine rules on pre-booking a hotel for quarantine purposes. Now, in compliance with Philippine regulations, only one person is allowed per room except for the following. Families from the same household traveling together, especially those with minors. Also, those health and emergency frontline services personnel are also exempted from this rule. Another set of passengers are those guests requiring a companion such as minor children or children below 18 years of or age or persons needing assistance such as senior citizens those who have disabilities and those who have medical illnesses or conditions now if you think you are qualified in any of these exemptions you will be asked to sign a waiver when you quarantine in a hotel 
Another important rule to remember is that the hotel must be accredited by the Department of Tourism or by the Bureau of Quarantine in order for the hotel to be accepted. If you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for watching and if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.